Hi, it's Adam with Web Starts. In this video, I'll be showing you how to perform a test transaction for your online store using Web Starts. In Web Starts, there's two main ways that you can test a transaction for your store. The first is by putting your store into test mode, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. And then the other way is just to perform a live transaction using a real product and your own credit card number. You'll want to do that for final testing. To get started, log into your Web Starts account, and from the dashboard, be sure to click on the Store app to launch the Manage Store modal. Next, click on the Settings tab, and you'll notice that there's a toggle switch in the top right where you can toggle between Live Mode and Test Mode. Notice that when I try to toggle into test mode, I get an alert. It's just reminding me that if I leave my account in test mode and I begin to receive live transactions, you're not going to actually receive any money for the products that you sell, and that'd be very bad. So be sure to put your store back into live mode prior to giving out your store URL for the public to shop from your online store. So with my account in test mode, what I can do is I can actually just navigate back to my store and I can begin to shop. So I'm just going to click on shop now and I'm just going to add this hoodie to my cart and then I'm going to proceed to checkout. Once on the checkout page, I'll just enter in my information. I've already done that, like for example, my billing details and shipping details. I've added my delivery method. I'm not actually using a coupon. And then this is where you begin to do your test is just by entering any card number. When your account is in test mode, you don't need a real card number. You can just enter anything into this field. And then what you need to do is enter an expiration date for that fictitious card number into the expiration date field, and then just make up any three digit code and click continue. Now you're ready to place your order, but again, we're not really placing a real order, we're only placing a test order. So when I click that, what happens is I get a notification. I'm sent to the confirmation page, just like what the customer would be sent to. And then in my email, I'm actually getting a copy of the receipt that the customer would receive, and I'm getting a copy of the notification that I would receive that provides me things like the customer's address and of course what they purchased. You can also see that information by going back over to your account and then clicking on the notification tab. You can see there that I have one new order placed on my store and when I click on it, it takes me to the orders tab in my managed store modal where I can then go ahead and fulfill the order. Now something to keep in mind is that when your account is in test mode, the orders that you place will show up in your reporting. So if you want to remove those from your reports, you would just click this reverse charge icon right here. And then that test transaction would be removed from your reporting. So if you wanted to see today's sales, for example, it wouldn't reflect any sales for today simply because all of the sales that we made today were tests and not real sales. Now, once you're happy with the way that your preliminary testing is going and you're almost 100% sure that you want to present your store to the public and begin accepting online transactions, it's highly recommended that you do a live transaction. And to do that, go back over to your settings tab, make sure that you're in live mode. And that means that you're going to really accept a credit card charge from your website. Then go ahead and go back onto your website. And just like we did before, go through the process and add a product to your cart and complete checkout. But this time you're going to complete checkout with a real live credit card number that you actually have that's going to generate a charge. Now, the thing that you want to be careful of is that once you're done with that transaction, if you don't want that charge to be on your next credit card bill, you're going to have to log in to either your WePay, Stripe, Authorize.net, or PayPal account, whatever you're using to take payment and refund or void that payment. In order to get the reporting correct, just like we talked about earlier, you're going to need to go under orders, find the order, and then be sure to 
reverse the charge. If your transaction went through okay and everything is looking exactly the way that you expect and you've completed your final testing, then you're ready to go ahead and begin selling online. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you learned some helpful information about testing your online store and accepting a test order. Another recommendation I'd like to make is that if you are creating a product just for the sake of testing, you might want to create that product to be something like a dollar or a small value, just in case you forget to go in and refund yourself that charge. That way you're not placing a large charge onto your credit card. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications in YouTube so you can be the first to find out when I release a new video. And as always, don't forget to visit webstarts.com to create your very own free website and online store. Thanks for watching.